Hello folks and welcome back. So now we have our bow in the game. She can pick it up, it goes to her menu, and she's got a slot to equip it. But that's pretty much all she can do with it right now. So let's set up an actual, let's get it to where she can go ahead and equip it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get some animations. So I have already packaged up uh, on... I should have had this set up already. Get out of here. So I'll leave a link to this. <laughs> I, I packaged up the bow and arrow animations that I'm going to be using. Or you can use whatever animations you have. I'll leave a link to this page directly so you ain't going to go through all that that I just did. Uh, but once you download that or once you find the arrows the animations you're going to use, then you need to import them to your engine. So I'm going to go into my engine in my animations folder from my character and just bring them all in. I'm going to select her skeleton and that's all the change we got to make to it. Come on buddy. Alright, and then with all that done then we can start getting things set up for our blend space for our bow movement. So just like we set up the one for our sword and shield, we need to set up another one that will be uh, handling our bow and arrow moveset. So I'm going to right click and under animation go to blend space and pick the skeleton and this is going to be ranged BS. I'm going to open that up. And just like last time, we are going to adjust these horizontal and vertical axes. So the horizontal one, the one left to right, that's going to be the direction. Negative 180 for the minimum, 180 for the maximum. That way it covers 360 degrees. And then the vertical will be the speed. Now her run speed was 450. So you'll just set that maximum axis to whatever your max run speed is. So I'm going to drag my bow idle and set it all the way out here. Don't, you can ignore these weapons. They'll be replaced in a minute when we start setting up the positioning of the bow in her hand. And then I've got my bow walk forward and my bow run forward. I always get these backwards. So I'm going to just do walk left on this side, walk right on this side. I'm probably going to have to change them, but we'll see. So there's run right, walk back. So this is when you're moving, basically this and this far side are the same direction. So it's like if you picture a circle, then this is forward, this is left, this one would be behind you, and this way is to the right. So you want the walk back and the run back at the far side. So run back, you know, in relation to where they would be very based on your speed. So like walk speed here, run speed here, etc. It's actually, let's see, it's 225. Oh, I'm going to move this down. If you hover over the thing, it'll tell you the speed. So if she's moving at 112 uh, velocity, then probably better there. Let's see, 211. We'll see how it looks in game. Let's just get everything else done first. All right, so with all that done, now let's go over to her skeleton which is this skeleton diagram thing and we can actually apply the weapon to her and go ahead and position it. So I'm going to right click the shield slot and I'm going to remove all attached assets. That'll get rid of the sword and shield so we can better position the bow. Now under the preview scene settings, under the animation I'm going to go to use specific animation because I want her to use the new bow idle animation. I'm going to go ahead and pause it though and just bring it right back to the beginning. That way, we can just bring it right in. So, 
these animations are set up for the bow to be in her left hand so I'm gonna find that one and I'm gonna add a socket and I'm gonna hit F2 to rename it and this will be my bow slot right clicking we can add a preview asset let's find that bow mesh that we brought in and then you'll just position it where you need it this is why fixing that little pivot point also helps so about there usually your hand would be at the bottom because usually there's a little knock right here for the arrow to rest on so just kind of rotate it around until it's got the right look and fit that's looking good for now so just to test it I'm gonna also let's see firing the bow That'll be alright. That looks good for now. So now that we have it set up where we want it to spawn, let's go through getting the animations set up. So I'm going to go into her player animation blueprint. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. We need to go into her actual player blueprint and set up all the functionality. So I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to open up my project settings because we also need an input for her to be able to draw the bow. So under input I'm going to add another action mapping called draw bow and for mine it's going to be the Z but the Z key so once that's done inside the player blueprint inside our event graph gonna find a little open space and when you're adding functionality such as like the ability to do something new you want to restrict it based on other things and we'll go back and restrict this and so there's you build you iterate you add then you go back and fix things up and all kinds of stuff so so what I want to do is I want to right click and call that action event draw bow and I only want her to be able to draw the bow if she's for instance not falling doesn't already have a sword equipped etc so I'm gonna add a branch because I want to check is she fall it falling but since I also want to check other things I'm gonna drag off here and type and so I can compare some more stuff so looking through her booleans I want to see is she already changing equipment wait 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 I want to drag that back because I want to make sure she's not changing equip no if she's falling and if she's changing equipment then we okay 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 yeah, changing equipment directly to it, my bad. And if she has a sword already drawn. So if any of these things are true, then we don't want her to be able to do anything with the bow. So on the false, we are going to hook up one more branch because we want to see if she has the bow equipped or not. So I'm going to uncheck that condition variable, drag off, and promote it to a variable called bow drawn question mark. And I'll just go ahead and drop that up into my booleans category. So if false, then I want to set bow drawn and set that she is currently changing equipment. Oh, set that true. And then I'm going to copy the bow drawn, set it to false so that if the bow is drawn, when we click it, then it'll set it back to false. And then we're changing equipment again. So we'll just feed that right back into it. So now with that done, we need to go fix our equipping melee. So when we draw our sword, we want to make sure we don't already have a bow equipped. So when we check to see if this is a valid class, we want to drag off and do an AND, drag out our new bow drawn boolean, and here's where we want to see that it's not, not active. 
So if the bow drawn is not active and we have a sword equipped, then we can go through all this. So we'll compile real quick, and then we'll go into our animation blueprint. So in the event graph of the animation blueprint, we're going to go ahead and grab this. Just the cast to player and the try to get pawn owner. We'll add a pin and hook it up right there. And I'll drag it all the way down. So I will get that new draw or bow drawn boolean. Promote it to a variable called drawing bow. Or whatever you want to call it. Just something to where you can look at it and know that's for my bow. Compile that real quick. And then we'll go into our anim graph, the state machine. So we don't need to worry about this side of it. I want it to only happen based on if she doesn't have a sword drawn. So it doesn't have to be connected to anything up there. We'll do it straight from the base. I'll add a state called drawing bow. Add another one called ranged combat or just ranged or whatever you want to call it. One more stow bow. That's fun to say, isn't it? And then we'll hook it right there. So we want her to be able to transition into these states based on whether she's drawing the bow or if the animation's already done. So I am going to set the transition rules up first. So if she's drawing her bow, then we can go into this state. I'll go into there. Since I want her to be able to draw her bow on the go, I'm going to try not to rhyme too much. Because uh, then it just becomes a crutch. <laughs> Um, I'm going to drag out my draw bow animation, make sure it's not looping, and then I'm going to do a layered blend per bone, just like we did with the melee. So the blend pose is going to be the drawing bow, and for my base pose it's going to be my ranged blend space that we set up. So I'm going to hook my direction and speed up like that. And then just like we did last time, we need to set up the bone that we're actually blending. So clicking it in the config drop down, setting up its layer. It might look like this when you first see it. Just click those drop downs and you'll find this branch filters. This is what filters through to the bone in the skeleton that you want to uh, blend through. So I'm going to add. And then this is the bone name and the blend depth, just like last time. Just like last time, I'm going to use just the spine. Remember, you can always go to this and check the skeleton. It'll bring this up. So I'm using spine. You can use spine one. Or they'll all give pretty good results. So the blend depth, I'm going to go with five. That way it's about halfway through. It blends the animations nicely. I'm going to click the mesh space rotation and the scale rotation so that it scales and rotates according to the skeleton nicely. And instead of overriding, we want to normalize by weight. Nope and then hook that up. Compile that. Then I'm just going to copy this. The layered blend. That way we don't have to set it up in the next one also. So for the transition rule from drawing bow to range combat, I want to open that up and type in ratio because we want to get the time remaining of our draw bow animation so that once it reaches a certain point so if it's less than or equal to say 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, depending on whichever you like, uh, it'll transition to the next state. So ranged combat is going to just be that ranged blend space. We don't need to worry about blending any bones because it's all set up already. Then for ranged combat to stowing the bow, we want to get out our drawing bow and then see that it is not valid anymore. And then from stow, oh, right. And then stobo, this is where we're going to paste that layered blend. So I'm going to go back to the base locomotion. So I want to use that as my base. And the blend will be stowing my bow. So I'll hook that just like that. All this is already set up since we did it last time. And I'll hook my speed value just right there. And then stow bow to base. Well, oh, and we got one more. Oh, and we want to make sure that this is not set to loop either. 
So that's very important. You want to make sure that you highlight that in the details panel. Make sure that it is not looping. Otherwise, it'll try to play through. It doesn't do the. Uh, it sometimes will do a hiccup when it's trying to transition back. So this way, it just plays the one time and then goes through. So now for stowing the bow, we want to get another ratio and find out if our time remaining of our stowing animation is running out so less than or equal to 0 0.01 just like last time and that if I'm remembering right should be about all so yeah so there's that and that's looking pretty good now she won't be able to jump because we haven't changed that, uh, that set that changing equipment value back yet. So we need to do some things to our animations and we need to kind of update this just a little bit more because we need to also uh, make sure that she has an actual bow equipped. So I'm going to drag this back a little bit. I'm going to hook up another branch. I'm going to drag out my bow info from the gear. And I'm just going to right click and split the struct pin. Dragging from the item class just to check to see if it is valid. And then if true, then we want to be able to do all this. So now I don't have a bow equipped, so I can't actually go through the animations. But once I equip the bow, then yeah, she should be able to. Now we shouldn't be able to click back through because we haven't undone this just yet. It should be being set to true. So if And false if it's false. So um oh I gotta I gotta check something. I might be sometimes I get these just a little bit confused. So let me make sure that she's not able to go through those animations if she has a sword equipped. Yeah, it activated because I can't put the sword away, so let's see. Back in the player blueprint, we might want to go ahead and set these apart. So we'll just hook is falling directly to the false. And I'll add one more branch. I don't like to use too many branches, but sometimes if you're not getting the right results, uh, then you can. So if she's not falling, and let's see, let's get rid of that one. And changing equipment and sword drawn not we'll hook the true right there now let's check it out let's see so I can bring the bow out and I can put it away it's hmm Changing equipment. Let's see. Maybe it's an or. Sometimes I get that confused as well. No. Or. So let's check that. Okay, now I can't put it away. It is an or. It used to be an and. I don't know. It's. Maybe that's one of the things about the engine. Maybe I'm being super blonde and just not understanding. But if that's the case, maybe we can hook this just right here. Get rid of that. So yeah, sorry about the little step to the side, but let's make sure if I can draw the bow. I can't put it away, so it's working right now. Alright, so in the player blueprint, once we draw the bow, 
we need to set this a little bit further because I forgot we also need to change her movement mode so I'm gonna get character movement and just like we did for the sword and shield I want to set orient rotation to movement when she has the bow drawn I want that to be true and from the character movement use controller desired rotation so this will rotate the make sure that the no, oh, no, we want that one to be false and this one to be true. Because if she has the bow, we want her to face in the same direction and not rotate based on the direction she's moving. We want the mouse to be the what turns her. So I'll control C and copy that real quick. And then we'll hook that to the changing. I'll alternate that. And we'll just hook everything up like that. So now when we equip and draw the bow, Hey, I actually got the animations right. All right. But now we need to actually be able to put the bow away once it's fully equipped. So the way we can do that is with animation notifies. Now, something to keep in mind on animation notifies. If you are using a character that has multiple meshes, multiple skeletal meshes, uh, and they each are using that animation blueprint your animation notifies will fire multiple times because it's referencing each one across each piece of the body so a way you can get around that which it's a little bit more complicated but you can basically duplicate your animation blueprint and the animations uh, because you'll want to duplicate a version of your for instance on my withdrawing sword I have these two animation notifies. If I duplicate the animation, the duplicate will also have this. So if you duplicate the animation, you'll want to delete your notifies and then set up your duplicate anim BP for all your body pieces. So it's a little complicated, but that's how you can kind of get around that. Uh, let's see. Oh, another thing we can do real quick. Before we get into the fixing of the animation, let's um, we can call our cam shift. So melee cam shift. We'll try the melee cam for this one. Melee cam reshift. We might need to set up another one to be a little bit more in line with the bow, but this should work for now. So let's try that out real quick. All right, well, that looks all right. But now we need to be able to put the bow away. So now we'll go into the animation and actually fix that. So I want to go to my draw bow animation and figure out what I called. So finished, if I remember correctly, finished in here just says that we're not changing equipment anymore. So we can actually use that same animation notify. We don't have to set up a new one. So I'm going to go to my draw bow, well, stow bow since it's right here. Find the point that I want to add my finished notify. Finished. Let's move it straight to the end. Close to the end. I'm not going to move it all the way to the end because I have it set to transfer at a, like 99% or something like that. So just to make sure that it does call right, I'm going to move it up a little bit. And then on the draw bow, I'll do the same thing. So I'll set it about, about here. Finished. That thing keeps, we'll get rid of that. All right, now let's take a look. So pull my bow out, which doesn't actually spawn yet. And I can put it away when I'm done. And since we have it set up uh, through the changing equipment, just like the sword, if I'm putting the bow away, I can't jump. Or if I'm pulling it out, I can't jump. Uh, one thing we can do to fix real quick is in our ranged combat blend space. Let's just back this up real quick. We'll do a blend by 
spool. So I'm going to check to see if she is jumping. If she's not, I want it to play this. And if she is, then we can just draw out that um, loop falling. So we'll do that. Compile, and that should fix that to where... Yeah, that looks better. All right, so now that's all the animations and the blend space to get that going. In the next one, we will actually spawn the bow in our hand and get it ready to fire. So thanks for coming by, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.